Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is a little bit different. I want to talk about creating original work and I'm doing so from the perspective of somebody who has been a generic photographer and now I feel that I have a style that is recognisable um, and that clients recognise. I think some other photographers, probably not too many, also recognise as my style. Now, this has been the accumulation of 15 years of work to get to this point. So if you're like 10 years in going, I've still not got it, don't panic. It's only in the last two to three years that I've really nailed this down. And an important part of all of this journey is the process. You've got to love the process. But this video specifically is about how we create original images and what you can do to help yourself be able to create an original body of work. Now, the importance of this is clear. There are millions of us photographers. We are everywhere and we are all perfectly capable. The difference between a good photographer and the elite of photography is very small. It's a few percent, but that few percent of increase in quality of work comes down to really knowing what you're doing and really understanding what it is you're trying to portray and trying to put together within your body of work and within your style. Now, part of the way that I've created this stems back to my childhood almost. And that is in that I've always had this deep-seated belief that I didn't want to end up like my parents, as I'm sure many of you can agree. Now, my parents had to work real jobs, and I'm not a fan of working so much. So I wanted to make sure that whatever I did in my lifetime, I wasn't going to end up in a nine-to-five job. And I think that's an important part of this. I have never, ever had the aspiration to work for anybody else. I was going to be a professional violinist, I was going to be a professional cyclist, and then I was going to be and have become a professional photographer. And that has always been the journey I've wanted to be on. And I think that's important because it gives me a perspective on the world and that perspective on the world helps me to create original work. Now, this is not the only way to do it. You do not have to copy the route I've taken. There are a million ways to become a top professional photographer or a good professional photographer. This is just how I did it and this is what I know. So hopefully imparting this information will be of use. Now I'm gonna go through a load of different points that I think are relevant in terms of creating original work. And the first one I think is the sort of pillar of this. And that is having a perspective on the world, having a way that you see the world. And a lot of that comes from understanding who you are as a person. And I need to raise my chair. Woo, there we go. Now, over the years, I have tried to be the sensible, professional, grown-up adult photographer, but that isn't me. I am childish. I am somewhat stupid in my behaviour. I enjoy eating sweets. Let me show you. These are supposed to be photographed. They were full up to here. I've eaten them down to here. Not for any reason, just because I like kids' sweets. I like junk food. I'm a food photographer who's not particularly fond of gourmet food. I like gummy bears. These are cola bottles, they're good. Chewier than I expected. But this is who I am. I am, at a weekend, for example, my idea of fun is playing with the kids. Some people go, oh, I'm gonna go and play with the kids, I don't really like that. I will happily play iPad, Xbox, Lego, some weird game in the garden where we're chasing each other out. I find that enjoyable. I'm basically a child who didn't ever really grow up, which is fundamentally not good for society. If everyone was like me, we would be in a real mess, but because there just seems to be me in an empty warehouse, it works okay, we get things done. Now, having this perspective on the world and having this enjoyment allows me to create a body of work which represents what I believe in, what I stand for and who I am. My work is almost always childish, playful, bold, graphic. I'm very much into pop art. Pop art? Pop art. You know, Hockney and all of that sort of stuff. That That is my world, that is what I enjoy. You know, my childhood was on a council estate eating very cheap food because that's all we could afford. So that is what comes from me. I can't do a great image of a gourmet meal. I know nothing about gourmet food. I know about smashing 10 Big Macs together and throwing them down your face so you can go out drinking down the park at night. That's the world I know about. And if you're worrying about the accent and wondering where it comes from, I had elocution lessons because when I got to university, I realised I was a little bit different to the others. So when I've had a few beers down the park, you get to hear the true accents. So having this point of view in life and these experiences, which you all have, everyone has this, everyone has their own, this is who I am. That is like the starting point. That is the building blocks to going, right, what is my original work going to be? 
And hopefully from the example I've given you, it'll help you go, right, well, if this is my background, maybe you do come from a gourmet food background. Maybe that's what you love, that's what you know, and that's what you can put into it. But maybe you have a real interest in 1980s pop. Maybe you can combine the two to something no one's seen before. And that is the crux of the matter. It's what nobody has seen before. Now, you can't be truly original. It doesn't exist because everything has to come from a previous conceptual idea. But what you can do is take one original idea by bringing two already created ideas together and then having something slightly new. And that is absolutely the way to do this. Which brings me through to the next point, which is fear of ridicule. And we all have it. I have it on this YouTube channel. I'm a massive introvert. I'm filming this by myself in a warehouse. I work by myself nearly every day. Unless we've got a big production on with the crew, I am in here by myself. And that is out of choice. I like to be alone. Even when I have staff coming in, I either have them in for half days only or we have days off in between because I need alone time. I don't like being ridiculed online, as no one else does, but it's part of my job. Um, and, I, and I get fearful of posting stuff online in case people ridicule the work I've produced. But the work that I feel might be ridiculed is the work that makes me the money. When I go and do something like the, the naked banana shot, or when I go and just photograph a suite really close and perfectly, and yes, of course, people ridicule it online, but I get paid. And, you know, th this is the difference. You need to get beyond that point of fear of ridicule and just go, well, do you know what? No one's done it before. Maybe I should do it. If you go, I've seen lots of work like this, let's recreate it. That is not going to be great for your career, long term, short term, any term. So having something which goes, right, I've not seen this before. People might think it's stupid. If that's your thought process, do it. It'll more than likely get you somewhere in the future. It might not be instant. You might not get the reception and the accolade on social media, but then who cares? Most of the top photographers don't have great social media followings. Those with massive social media followings aren't top photographers. They are top online photographers, which is a very different thing. We'll do a video on that one day, but the difference between someone who's actually working with a top agent, working with top art buyers, producers and creative directors, and someone who's got half a million Instagram followers is huge. They're two very different things. No, neither is better or worse than the other, but you need to be very clear on where you're trying to go with this and which direction you want to be going in. So in creating this original work, you need to make sure you don't worry about social media likes. I don't take my worth from how many people like my images. 50% of the population are below average intelligence. So with that in mind, why would I care? You know, and even those who are above it might not have a good knowledge of art. They might not have a good knowledge of photography. Photographers certainly don't. I definitely don't take other photographers' point of view into account with my creative work. Technical work, absolutely. I will ask for technical feedback. But when it comes to creative work, I'm not asking a photographer because only I know if the creative concept is good because it has to be part of me. And it has to be something I truly believe in from my perspective, from my experiences, and from my tastes in the world. And that is very, very important. Now, the trap a lot of people fall into is when you're starting out, you need to be a jack of all trades, do a bit of everything just to make the money coming in. Now, to turn around and go, do you know what? I'm only going to photograph cans of pop upside down, turned inside out, seems ludicrous. But at the high end of the business, that is where this sort of work makes you money, not in upside down, inside out cans of pop, that would never work. But you get the gist. My work is often ridiculed on photography forums. That is fine because it is highly accepted amongst creative directors and art buyers. That matters. Some people go, oh, he's just photographed a suite on a bit of paper. Have a go at it yourself. Not as easy as it looks, but also I did photograph the suite on the bit of paper. You didn't. And this is very important. If someone goes, oh, that's easy. All you do is this. That's great. Why didn't you do it first? And you need to get into that position of going, right, it might be easy. It might be simple, but I've not seen it before. Maybe I should give it a go and see if I like it. And that is part of the, the constant workflow in order to get to a position where you are creating original work. I don't normally harp on about kit being important, but I want to talk about a few things that I believe, or at least they work for me, help increase your productivity and ability to create original work. Now, one of them is a nice workspace. Now, you don't have to have a studio. It might just be a nice corner of your, your room, whatever it may be, but make it yours. Make it something you enjoy. Make it something you like to be around. Having this studio set out the way I have it set out, this is my aesthetic. This is what I like. This is how I like things to be. It's very utilitarian. It's very, it's very me. You know, I can just drill something onto a table. It doesn't matter because I like just to have a working space. The same way that I do my wardrobe. I only have two of these hoodies, 
10 of these black shirts, two pairs of jeans. That's all I own. That for me works. That's how I like to live my life. And having those things allows me to just go, right, we're focusing on creating work. That is what we're trying to do here. The next thing is tools, having nice tools. I do not believe that having better camera equipment makes better photographs, but I do believe having tools that you enjoy using makes you more inclined to use them. I enjoy a nice moleskin notebook. So when I'm taking my notes and, you know, doing my little uh, color swatches, and I've got nice pens and pencils and I can get it all to look how I want it to look like. Having this makes me more inclined to do that. Likewise, nice, nice, nice stationery. I like stationery, nice little pencil case. You know, you give it a good little like wrap up like this and it's just, it's nice. I like this. This sort of thing makes me happy and it makes me more likely to do something. So having the nice workspace, having the nice tools is all very important. Likewise, having some sort of method to your madness. I have a very strict policy of what I'm doing work-wise each day. Before I go to bed each night, I know exactly what I'm doing the next day. I don't wake up and go, let's photography. I go to bed, or well, before I go to bed, I take my notes and I go, right, tomorrow we need to achieve the following goals. And this is all based on a bigger plan. And we'll go through this in the business photography workshop I run where it's like annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily tasks. And that, that's how I run everything. There's never a point where I'm sat here and just go, I wonder what I should be doing today. Should I crack on with this? Should I do that? It's like, no, I've got a very clear list of things to do. And going through the process and going through the motions helps with originality and creativity. You do not get an original creative idea by waiting for it to happen. You have to do the work. Part of being a creative is turning up and doing the work, not sitting in some artsy cafe with your MacBook staring into space going, well, I wonder what's going to happen today. Absolutely not. You turn up, you go through the process and you do the work. And this leads me to a final point, which is unrelated to these completely. And that is working for free. The only time you know you're on the right train of thought and you're going down the right path is when you go, I will do this for free. And you do it for free. That's not to say you shouldn't be getting paid big money for your work. You should be when a client's booking you. But when you're turning up into the studio again, I've got a cool idea. Let's do it. I pay for most of my shoots. I spend money on most of my shoots. Most, probably 75% of the work you see from me, I paid to do it. I paid the crew. I paid the production. I put the money in. Now, granted, I get paid a very large sum of money when I do commercial work. So it affords me that ability to do it. But you need to have that mindset of, right, what are we creating this week? What am I creating? What's my creative process? The paid jobs in my particular mentality of living and my particular ethos of how I like to live my life, those paid jobs fund me to be creative. I do a big job. I get paid a big paycheck. I then use that money to create my own view on the world, my own perspective on the world. And that is where it comes from. That's not going, oh, I'm going to buy new cameras, which obviously you have to, but it's more things like, right, we can hire in a stylist, we can hire in a good retoucher, we can hire in a good assistant, we can get all of this stuff together, we can do some set building and we can create something which is truly original and truly my perspective on the world. And that for me is what this whole industry and this whole business is about. Mm -hmm.